News has just broken in Argentina that activist Milagro Sala has been sentenced to 13 years in prison. Sala has been charged with criminal association, reparting the state, and extortion. The activist is also facing two more cases. Her supporters say she is a political prisoner. And Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro has addressed the National Constituent Assembly days after taking office. During a lengthy speech, Maduro presented his government plan for the next six years. He also described all the challenges Venezuela faced in 2018, both from internal and external forces. We have a new start. And for a new six years of government with a new definitive phase for economic prosperity, for strengthening the democratic life of the country and the consolidation of peace. Maduro also spoke about the resistance of the country beyond attacks and sanctions. With what they did to us, to our oil company, our currency, our wages, what they've done with public services, electricity, with terrorist attacks we have suffered, the attacks to our national family economy, any other country of the world would have dropped. All these circumstances have made us stronger, and that strength is an advantage to advance this year. 2018 was a year of resistance and counteroffensive. 2019 must have must be a year for economic offensive of the Bolivarian government and people. These achievements have been, they have tried to be invisibilized by the enemies of always. Even if we are not in peace with what we have reached, we were forced to make this list because this people, this government conducted by the leaders, each indicator is a true achievement. Before his speech, people gathered outside the Constituent Assembly's building to show their support for the Bolivarian government. Maduro was sworn in for his second term in office last Thursday before the Supreme Court, but ratified his mandate before the Constituent Assembly. We want to send a message to President Maduro that in the next six years of his administration we should be in peace because Venezuela is a country of peace with hard-working people. We are going to give our best to support this process. We are here today to show our support and solidarity with our government in this special day. God bless President Maduro. The second and final presidential debate was held in El Salvador. Voters will choose their new president on February the 3rd. More in this report. One by one, the candidates running for the presidential office arrived. Absent from the debate was the candidate for the Ghana party, Nayib Bukele, who has confirmed his participation but pulled out at the very last minute. The people who followed this debate were unable to listen to him and how he will solve the problems of the country. Then he is left to duty, not us. The debate was held behind closed doors. The press followed it on a screen located outside the debate room. Security was the first to be approached. All of the candidates agreed that this is one of the most difficult problems for Salvadorians. The state's forces are joining to enter the most vulnerable communities with sports, education and job programs. Because when we have young people studying, when we have young people working, we don't have them on the streets looking for other alternatives. 125 radio stations and 11 TV channels broadcasted the debate. In an hour and a half, the candidates addressed economy and migration, foreign policy, corruption, health and education issues. I think I made my points clear. I'm convinced that I have won this debate. But the big winner here must not only be named Hugo Martinez. The big winner is the Salvadorian people, because the people had the opportunity to see the preparation level that each of us has, the capacity that we have, the commitment and the answers to the questions that the people have for us.
This is the last debate before the presidential election takes place on February 3rd. That day, around 5.6 million voters will get to decide who runs the country for the 2019-2024 term. Moving on, indigenous leader Leonardo Nastacuas Rodriguez has been murdered in Colombia. The victim belonged to the Agua ethnic group. Federal police are investigating the murder, while indigenous authorities are conducting their own research. In 2018, 34 leaders of the Awa ethnic group were murdered by armed groups in their territory. The National Indigenous Organization of Colombia denounced the government's lack of guarantees for indigenous leaders and failure to secure the protection and defense of the country's ancestral lands. And Colombian authorities have activated a risk prevention protocol in communities affected by the Ituango hydroelectric project just a few days ahead, ahead it is partially closed down. The defense minister said there is a reinforcement group ready to support four municipalities located near the project. The dam's closure will take place on Wednesday due to the discovery of a 40-meter hole in the tunnel, which has provoked a severe crisis. Either Ituango Dam project began in 2010 to supply 17% of energetic demand in Colombia, but has had several problems along the construction process. The Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas, has expressed his concerns at the United Nations regarding the increasing aggressions prompted by Israel. Abbas has met with the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres to discuss the need to implement the resolutions taken by the body regarding the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Palestine will take over the presidency of the Group of 77, the largest bloc of developing countries in the United Nations. And Syria has filed a complaint to the UN after the latest Israeli airstrikes near the Damascus airport. Our correspondent in Syria has the details. Syria's Foreign Relations Ministry has sent a formal complaint to the UN's Secretary General and the Security Council condemning the latest airstrike by Israeli jets in the Arab Republic damaging not only service buildings at the Damascus International Airport, but also several aircrafts. The Syrian government highlights that the continuation of Israel in the serious aggressive approach would not have been possible without the political, military and media cover provided by the U.S. administration in the context of a state of immunity from any accountability provided by well-known states in the U.N. Security Council, which could enable Israel to continue to threat peace and security in the region. The ministry added that the Security Council's silence regarding such violations cannot be justified and demanded to accept its responsibilities in maintaining international peace and security and to take actions against Israel. We'll be back very soon. Stay with us. Welcome back. Mexican citizens protesting against fuel shortages have started to wear yellow vests in a similar fashion to protesters in France. Citizens rallied to protest against fuel shortages affecting the country. The shortages are, are a consequence of a government program that seeks to combat fuel thefts by closing some state-owned oil pipelines. President Andrés Manuel López Obrador has called on citizens to remain calm as the crisis is reportedly under control. They need to give us a solution and actually follow through with it. One thing are guachicoleros, the fuel thieves, and another are the people, the city. What we really need is fuel to keep flowing. Meanwhile, the Mexican president has pointed out that private companies are not using their important license for gasoline, further contributing to the shortage. We want to talk to the owners of this important license to find out why the authorized imports have not been carried out. Representatives of the Chilean clergy have met with Pope Francis in the Vatican to address the sexual abuse scandal hitting the Chilean church. Members of the Chilean Episcopal Conference and the Pontiff discussed different ways to prevent and face cases of sexual abuse. During the meeting, the clergyman committed to promote dialogue and support for the victims. 
reviewed what we experienced as a church this year since the Pope's visit to Chile in January of last year until now, and the commitments and discernments we are making as a church. Now we are moving forward. But victims of sexual abuse have criticized the attitude of the Chilean bishops. They are angry about a statement made by the Secretary of the Episcopal Conference, who says that the resignations made by bishops are no longer into effect. According to the canon law, Chilean bishops resigned en masse last May, but the Pope has only admitted 7 out of the 30, uh, 34 resignations. Our correspondent in Santiago, Tierra Valenzuela, has the details. Pope Francis held a meeting with five members of the Chilean Episcopal Conference regarding the sexual abuse cases that have involved several clergy members. 144 denounces have been filed and 36 cases are still under investigation. Despite this, the Archbishop of Santiago, Ricardo Ezzatti, remains in his post even after being accused of covering up the abuses. Ezzatti and other senior clergy members have denied all the accusations. After Pope Francis traveled to Chile in January 2018, the claims of sexual abuse and cover-ups became imminent after being ignored for years. The Pope also accepted the resignation of seven Chilean bishops, and several more are expected. We thank Piare for that report. A Brazilian surgeon has died after his helicopter crashed into the water while patrolling near Rio de Janeiro. He was patrolling along three other colleagues over the Guanabara Bay when their helicopter fell into the water. The other crew members survived. Authorities are still investigating the cause of the accident. After 518 years of resistance, the indigenous people of Brazil will now have to demand rights from a government that has clearly positioned itself against the claims of indigenous communities. In this latest report, our correspondent in Brazil shows how the people in the south of the state of Bahia think about the declarations of Jair Bolsonaro. Of all the governments that have led Brazil, none demark the lands of the Pataxo people, but on the other hand, the state incentivized deforestation during the 20th century and recently expelled indigenous communities, something that opened the path for the construction and expansion of the National Discovery Park. Having not set boundaries for Pataxo lands, in addition to conflicts with businessmen, causes a lot of harm for indigenous people. Without defined borders for our land, we don't have anything, not even health or education. After much struggle, the Discovery Park is today a shared management between the statement and indigenous people. The National Foundation for Indigenous People recognized 28,000 hectares as a Pataxo territory, an arring a slow process of draw the demarcation lines. Progress is threatened by the arrival of Jair Bolsonaro to the presidency, who promises to end the demarcation of such lands and to remove the indigenous peoples from what is qualified as isolation. This model this model of integrating the indigenous to society, as they say, is a preconceptual model, and it is a crime, as we are not really integrating. This model of not demarcating land and giving away land titles breaks the constitutional rights stipulated in Articles 231 and 232, because we didn't come from somewhere else. We are from here. We own this land. Supporting him, Bolsonaro has the agricultural sector, historical enemies of indigenous people. I believe that the next four years will be hard for us and for our people. We are once again repressed by our president, so I hope that he thinks of everyone before he acts. The Pataxo remember that Bolsonaro was elected with a religious argument and they sent him a message. We hope that he will have a conscience. May God enter his head. From what I have seen on television, he talks a lot about God, so I hope that he does things right, so he won't have any problems. These are the first people who had contact with the Portuguese. Here, the resistance was born, and it is renewed against the forces that crossed from Europe and are still today attacking indigenous people. The Pataxo, who have already resisted for 518 years, will continue with their struggle. A major sewer pipe has broken in Peru's capital Lima, affecting about 2,000 residents. So much water in some areas have reached one and a half meters high. Police are helping people to evacuate, but 70% of residents refuse to abandon their homes. President Martin Vizcarra said the break was caused by construction work at a train station nearby. 
Researchers are using the Chilean Patagonia as an open lab to study the consequences of climate change. Scientists from the Austral University of Chile analyzed the chemical, physical, and biological variables of the Patagonian waters and glaciers. They also studied the behavior of whales, dolphins, and algae, and their food supplies. Their goal is to predict how climate change could affect oceans and life around the world. We'll be back very soon. Stay with us. Welcome back. Teachers and police forces have clashed in Greece during a demonstration. Demonstrators were blocked by riot police officers when they were marching to Parliament. Protesters launched firecrackers and police responded by firing tear gas. Teachers are rejecting a new process the government is planning to implement to hire educators. The Greek defense minister has resigned in protest at a deal ending a long-running dispute with Macedonia over its name. Now, Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras is set to face a vote of confidence over the name's dispute. Our correspondent explains. The resignation of the defense minister and leader of the independent Greek party, Panos Kamenos, has prompted a political crisis in the country. As a consequence, the government of Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras could fall as he has been forced to call on a confidence vote to confirm if he still has the support of the parliament. Greece recently reached an agreement with its northern neighbor that from now on will be named North Macedonia. This country approved the constitutional process to adopt the new name last week, and it's now Greece's turn to leave the veto and allow North Macedonia to start the process to enter the European Union and NATO. Greek nationalists are unhappy with this decision, as they consider that the name Macedonia should only be used for the Greek region. That's the reason Panos Kamenos has resigned, but it is yet to be seen if this also implies the fall of the coalition that supports the government. A vote of confidence is set to take place this Wednesday. So far, Tsipras has secured 147 votes, but is missing four to secure the majority. This could come from the independent Greeks party, or Tsipras will have to look for more support in other parties. At least four people have been killed after a car bomb exploded in Afghanistan and over 40 more have been wounded. The attack took place in a foreign compound in the east of Afghanistan capital, Kabul. The blast targeted Green Village where some foreign NGOs and workers used to be based. No group has claimed responsibility for the attack yet. Authorities in the Iraqi city of Mosul have begun demolishing a building used by the Islamic State group to throw men accused of being gay to their deaths. The one-time icon of modern architecture became infamous under Daesh and its brutality against homosexuality. But its demolition has divided residents, with some saying the building should be kept to never forget the horrors prompted by extremists. <laughs> I hope it goes back to the same architecture so that the scenery will be preserved. Also, I hope they keep a part of the old structure that represents the destruction caused by this group. A cargo plane crash in Iran has killed 15 people. According to authorities, only one person on board has survived. The Boeing 707 military cargo plane was carrying meat from Kyrgyzstan. The aircraft made an emergency landing call. The cause of the accident has yet to be found. The cockpit voice recorded from an Indonesian aircraft that crashed in October has been recovered. The discovery could be critical to explaining why the plane fell out of the sky just after takeoff, killing 189 people on board. The black box was discovered early Monday, authorities said, where human remains were also found near the voice recorder. Thousands of garment workers in Bangladesh continue with their strike as they reject the new wage offered by the government. 
Workers have been on strike for over a week. More than 4 million people working in the industry are exposed to dangerous working conditions in addition to very low wages. They also complain about the hike of the prices in essential commodities. Bangladesh is the second largest exporter of garments in the world after China. Victims of the 2011 post-electoral violent crisis have protested in Ivory Coast. Victims rallied against the potential release of the former president, Lared Gabobo, who refused to accept his defeat in the elections, provoking a violent standoff. The International Criminal Court is set to decide on Tuesday whether to release or not Gabobo in his trial for crimes against humanity. About 3,000 people were killed in the post-election conflict. Bagbo should not be freed, because if we free Bagbo, our justice is in vain, because there will be no justice for us. So we would like at least Bagbo to be convicted and the law to be pronounced. Tunisian trade unions have called for a general strike in protest against a deteriorating economy. A statement issued by the Tunisian General Trade Union has called on all workers to stay away from work on Thursday. The strike comes as the country marks the 8th anniversary of the 2011 revolution that toppled longtime ruler Sine El Abdini Ben Ali and sparked the so-called Arab Spring. The Zimbabwean government has blamed the opposition movement for democratic change and foreign agents for riots that rocked the country. Demonstrations erupted in capital Harare against the sharp rise of fuel price. State security ministers said over 200 people have been arrested in connection with the riots. And still in Zimbabwe, the government has greenlighted the Russian diamond giant Al Rosa to start their operations in the country. The company has set up a sub subsidiary with a two year plan to expand in the country. The government has opened a small window for foreign companies to participate in its diamond industry to maximize exploration. Myself and my delegation are very happy to have been invited by this organization which has exposed to us the state of the art technology in the field of diamond industry. And we are so happy that in the process, we believe that uh, Arosa will accept our invitation as Zimbabwe to participate in the development of our diamond industry. And finally, authorities in Bangkok are using water cannons in efforts to clean the air and the streets amid high levels of air pollution. The level of dust particles has exceeded the safe level in 30 of 50 of the city's districts for days. Many shops ran out of masks due to high demand, forcing the government to hand over protective masks to the people. Bangkok's government defended the initiative after locals said this is not the best way to solve the pollution problem. And with that story, we've come to the end of this news brief. These and other stories, as always, find them on our website at telesurenglish.net. And also join us on social media. We are on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. For Telesur English, I am Estefania Bravo. Thank you for watching.